The movie starts in 1961, and the Congolese Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba is executed by Moise Shombe. Moise is being supported by foreign mining companies, and he executed the Prime Minister for nationalizing all the mining industries. After the execution, a civil war breaks out as the mineral-rich state of Katanga seceded under the leadership of Moise. As the secession is not recognized by the UN countries, United Nations Secretary General Dag assigns Dr. Connor Cruz to head up a peacekeeping mission. Congo is a producer of over half of the world's copper and cobalt to USA and the USSR. Both of these minerals are necessary to the superpowers' weapons guidance systems and both will be looking to support their sides. Connor fears this conflict could potentially trigger World War III. UN Secretary General Dag privately orders Connor to take offensive action against the Moise regime and return a democratically elected leader in Congo. As a neutral country, the Irish are selected for the peacekeeping mission in Katanga. Irish Army Commander Patrick, or Pat for short, is selected to lead the peacekeepers, which are composed of young men who have never experienced war before. And the young soldiers are not that confident about their leader too, since he too has never been to war before. But Pat is seen as a great tactician in exercises. But now, he will have to prove himself in the battlefield. Pat lives with his loving wife Carmel, who is very worried about him. He's also nervous about this mission, but he doesn't show her that. And before he leaves, they dance together and they finally say their goodbyes. After taking their vaccinations, the Irish peacekeepers arrive at the UN compound in Jadaville, Katanga. And after examining the compound, Pat figures the compound is wide open for attack. He then tells his men to dig trenches and defensive fighting positions. Moise is not happy with their arrival. He asks the Belgian mining company owner to help him deal with the UN soldiers, telling him if he loses power the country may fall back to communism which will lead to the removal of the mining companies again. Meanwhile, Connor arrives at Katanga. He meets up with the other UN forces and draws up a plan for an offensive attack on Moises' forces. And he calls this operation, Operation Morthor. Back at the camp, Pat notices that they were being watched by Moises' forces. He then checks out his arsenal and he finds some good weapons, but he also finds out that they only have food for two days. Fearing that this won't be enough for the entire team, he leaves with a few men to the nearest town to get some food. While he was in the shop, he meets with Madame Lafontaine, and she reveals to him that Jadaville contains the world's richest uranium deposits. She also tells him that the locals don't like them being here and to be very careful. After that, Pat with a few of his men go to a bar to get some drinks. There they meet a French mercenary, René and René has been hired by the mining companies to protect their business and help Moise's government. René offers Pat some French cognac and they have a little talk, and René basically makes fun of the Irish for never having participated in a war, and Pat responds by calling the French easy to evade and make surrender. Later that day, Pat goes to Elizabethville to meet up with a general and Connor. He tells them of his suspicion that the Katangese forces with the help of mercenaries might attack Jadaville soon. He asks them for better weapons and to have reinforcements sent to the camp, but Connor reassures him saying nobody's going to attack Jadaville. Later that night, Connor makes his UN forces launch an attack on the government buildings held by the Katangese, while the Indian peacekeepers who are attempting to seize the city's radio station kill 30 unarmed Katangese radio operators. Connor gets the news early in the morning, and fearing backlash, he orders the team for the incident to be hidden from the people. Back in his office, Moise is watching the news and he sees the UN forces are attacking his forces. He then calls the mining company's executive and gives them a green light to start an offensive operation in Jadaville. Meanwhile in the camp, all the Irish except one person are attending church. This one guy, who is a lookout, is a sniper, and he sees through his scope that the Katangese forces are approaching the camp. He uses his sniper to shoot the camp's bell to alert the rest. And when Pat sees this, he orders his men to get their guns and to go to their trenches. The Katangese forces, led by René, start shooting at the camp. The first wave of the attack has now begun and the Irish are outnumbered, but they use their trenches as the Katangese forces run to the front line without any cover. 
René is leading his forces from behind as Pat is fighting on the front with his men. And the Irish, who've never seen combat before and have absolutely no experience, surprisingly start pushing back on the Katangi's forces, inflicting heavy casualties on their side. The Katangi's side, I mean, not the, not the Irish. And this film actually really surprised me because this actually happened in real life. This is like a biography of what actually occurred. If you guys want me to recap more movies like this that are based on true stories, please leave a comment and I'll probably do it. As they are pushed back, René reorganizes his forces and plans to go in with three times the manpower with heavier artillery the next time. At this point, we see René noticing how he underestimated the Irish and now he's ready to attack with all his might. Back in the camp, Pat contacts the general's office and asks for more reinforcements, but he's told that all available troops are on Operation Morthor and that there won't be any reinforcements coming anytime soon. Meanwhile, the situation in Katanga gets worse, and Moise is using it to get political support from the people. And he starts to do this by giving a speech and calling the peacekeepers as peace enforcers. Later that day, the Katangi's forces are back, and now they have more men and heavier artillery. The Irish get back to their trenches as the second wave of attack begins. An intense firefight begins, and it looks like the Irish might lose this time. But Pat sees the mining company's executive standing afar at the back. Pat then asks the sniper to go to elevated ground and shoot the executive. And the sniper manages to shoot him through the heart. When René sees this, he orders his men to retreat. And this time, the Irish kill as much of the retreating forces as they can. After a few minutes, René pulls up a white flag and calls on Pat for negotiation. Pat sees the flag and they meet up in the middle. René requests, or should I say, demands Pat and his men to surrender. And he does this by claiming that he has unlimited ammo and manpower and it would only be a matter of time before his forces win. But Pat refuses the offer, telling René that he should be the one to surrender. René then asks for a temporary ceasefire to pick up the dead and take the wounded to a hospital, to which Pat agrees to. Ambulances arrive to take care of the wounded, but they're hiding René's forces behind them, who are crawling inside the long grass and getting closer to the camp. But right as the ambulance leaves, one of the Irish soldiers notices the men trying to hide amongst the grass. The third wave has now begun, and the Katangi's forces use mortars to explode the Irish's armory while also injuring more soldiers. But Pat's men manage to take out the soldiers in front of them. And then he uses a mortar to take out their mortar launchers, and this sets off bombs at the Katangi's camp which leads René to call back his forces to retreat. Now, the Irish have managed to push back the Katangis for the third time, but they're running out of ammo. Back in the city, Connor arranges a meeting with Moise. He asks him for a ceasefire between UN forces and the Katangis, but Moise demands for Katanga to be recognized as a country by the UN, which Connor has no authority to do. And so, their meeting ends without any resolution. US Secretary General Dagg hears the news about the failing of Connor's operation Morthor, and he plans to visit Moise himself. At night, Pat finally receives good news from the higher-ups, and he's told that reinforcements will be arriving tomorrow. Pat also asks for a whiskey bottle to celebrate. Later that same night, the Irish are attacked again by mortars, and this time the mortars were targeting to destroy what's left of their armory. Pat's men take as much ammo as they can before it's destroyed, and at this point they could really use some reinforcements. The next morning, Swedish and Indian UN forces attempt to reinforce the Irish, but the Katangi's forces have barricaded the road and ambushed the reinforcements, pushing them back and leaving the Irish alone again. Pat gets the news that there won't be any reinforcements coming and is told to hold their ground and defend Jadaville. After repelling the reinforcements, the Katangi's forces start their next attack. Pat orders his men to use their ammo very precisely, telling them to use one bullet to kill one person. But the Katangis are now using a warplane this time, which circles back every few minutes. And this overwhelms the Irish as they start to pull back. Pat also gets shot on the shoulder. Meanwhile, the Secretary General's plane is passing over Jadaville as they see the warplane behind them. 
Back in his office, Connor gets the news that the Secretary General's plane has been shot down and that there are no survivors. The news has also reached the rest of the world, and tensions are now very, very high between the US and the USSR, as the US is planning to send an army to take down Moise and re-establish a democratically elected leader. A UN helicopter arrives at the compound and Pat sends his injured men to get medical treatment. But the helicopter gets shot in the back by the Katangis, forcing it to land, and Pat saves his men before the helicopter blows up. And another wave of attack starts as thousands of Katangi's forces are surrounding the compound. An incredibly intense fight starts, but this time the Irish are losing, even though the Irish manage to kill more of the enemy's forces. They also don't really have a lot of ammo, and they're really outnumbered at least 1 to 10. And so, the Irish forces back down as they were getting cornered. But the shooting suddenly stops as Rene calls on Pat. They meet in the middle again, and Rene, admiring Pat, shakes his hand, and he then tells Pat to surrender and leaves. Pat returns to his men, and he asks them if they want to surrender. And all of them respond no. He tells them that it's a good thing that he's the one making the decisions, and he tells them that it's now over. After running out of ammunition, food and drinking water, and holding off as much as they can, the Irish finally surrender to Rene's men. They are then taken to prison, and they finally get freed in a prison exchange deal made between the UN and Moise's government. When they arrive home, they find it mostly empty. Pat wants to put his men up for medals for their heroism, but he's informed by a general that their surrender caused shame to the UN and that the higher-ups want to bury the truth of the siege for political reasons. And weirdly enough, the general even tries to court-martial Pat and his men for being cowards. He also tells Pat to shut up about what really happened, and this really pisses off Pat and he punches the general. In the final scene, the Irish team are waiting for Pat and they give him an army salute to show him their appreciation and respect. Pat leaves proud of his men and he also finds his wife waiting for him outside the airport. And the movie ends as they hug. And after that, there's like an end of credit scene where there's a writing that talks about how the Irish peacekeepers were actually treated as cowards and were even given the name the Jadaville Jacks. And only in 2005 were they honored for their heroism as the true story of the Siege of Jadaville were released to the public. And that is how our movie comes to an end. I hope you guys appreciated our recaps. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys on my next recap. Bye.